In this lesson, I'm going to show you about the Type tool. And that's down here in the toolbox. See the T for Type? If you right-click, we have the Horizontal, which is which way you want the lettering to go, basically. Vertical, and then there's some Mask tools we make it into later. Go ahead and uh, choose Horizontal, but we first need to open a file. And then we can just open a brand new file, by the way. If you want to just create a piece, you would go New, and then you would choose your options within here, width, height, what you want the resolution to be, and we'll get into a little bit of that later. But So we could create a brand new blank image and do some type, but I want to pick an existing image. I don't know why, but <laughs> let's go and choose something from Adobe Bridge. Let's open Bridge. Now uh, let's choose these palm trees from the samples. Now if you notice you, when, you're, when you have the type, the type tool, in this case the horizontal type tool, over the image you notice a little book, what looks like a book or where a cursor would be. So depending on where you want the, uh, um, the type to be, you click there. So once we click there, it starts flashing just like it would in a Word document. And now we get to choose our options within that type tool. We get to choose the uh, font we want. Pick whatever you want. I'm going to pick... Um, I saw one that... Oh yeah, this looked cool. Alright, and then regular, or you notice a bolder type there. And then how big you want it. I'm going to make it a little bigger, maybe 48. And then you have sharp, crisp, strong, smooth, some other options. So you, you're used to seeing some of this within Word documents, word processing programs. Do you want to center the text? Do you want to make it left aligned, right aligned? What color do you want it? Blah, blah, blah. So as far as the color, if we click here, we're given this whole range of colors, everything in between. So. I'm going to choose something orange. Now let's say that was a little... I want to move just a little bit up. Well, rather than trying to click perfectly in the section I want, once you've clicked and you can use the up and down arrows, I'm using the up arrow right now, and you notice how the color changes. So you can move it ever so slightly to a different shade of color. And I was looking for more of a orange-red, so let's try that for kicks. Once you click in any section, you can choose a lighter version of that color, a blacker version of that color, or a grayer version, whatever you want. Um, so this is the new color. This is the current one that was already preset. And this is for choosing specific color sets. So once you have the one you want, click OK. And now that color is here. We're also given other options like warping the text, which we may get into and get into later. In any case, let's type something here. Um, my dream vacation. I think that's too long for the whole picture, so I'm going to make vacation on the next line. You hit return just like you normally would. Now you notice that we're a little off here. Well, once you click anywhere else in the document with you have to choose another tool like the move tool now that's in stone now when you've when you created that lettering it made it into a new layer and we'll get into layers later but you'll notice that this whole image was one layer here called background now we've created my dream vacation now if we're on my dream vacation and that's highlighted as the layer we can then take this move tool grab it and move that lettering around wherever we want and then release. So there's one way to do lettering and the same can be done with uh, vertical lettering also where it writes it up and down instead of across. Now let's say you want to change that color. I said, oh, is that not quite the right color? So you'd have to go back to the horizontal type tool, get near the one of the letters and then start highlighting. Highlight it and then you could change it from up there. Now there's another place to change the color. You notice here one of our palettes called color 
is right there and it can be adjusted manually and this is um, foreground color and background color now if we go to swatches this allows us a different place to pick the color from and that turns into a little eyedropper tool when you hover over it and there's all sorts of different options within the section now you can't see that but uh, they're grayed out actually right now so if I grab this and I move it over you can move your palettes over you can move your toolbox around basically anything you want that makes your creative ability flow more freely so this is another place to choose the colors so color and swatches alright and then notice down here you have if you hover over this this is your foreground color this is your background color and then this ref resets it to default if you click that changes it to black I believe so if we go back to the move tool yeah it turned it to black so whatever color you want and then this little arrow swaps the foreground and background see now the foreground is white and the background is black we'll get into some of that later but those are some of your controls of the color